Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial on how to detect phishing emails. There has been a rash of emails that have been going out literally over the past year or so, and we're seeing businesses get hit with these over and over again. And rather than try to describe what to be looking out for, we thought it might make sense to actually create a video with several different examples and give you this video so you can show it to your staff. Please share this with all of your staff. Uh, shoot, share it with your friends as well because these emails are not just hitting businesses. They are also hitting individuals. So everyone needs to be on the lookout for these different kinds of threats. So what I've done is I've prompted up several examples. We're gonna run through them and do this fairly quickly, but I think you'll get the idea and you'll be able to see the different warning signs. So let's get right into it. All right, for our first example, let's go to one that came from the IRS, or at least it looks like it came from the IRS. So if you look at this email here, you can see it says it's a final notice for your tax return and from the refund processing center. Well, you can see right off the bat that this address is not from the IRS. So that's your number one red flag. Second thing is look at this beautiful IRS logo. I've never seen anything from the IRS that was beautiful. Uh, so that should be another red flag. Another thing that comes up as we scroll down is you can see that it says, Dear Taxpayer. Typically, a, a an email that is directed straight at you will actually know what your name is and is not going to give just a generic uh, generic introduction like that. So all of those are red flags, of course. And then you also have the uh, typical misspellings and grammar issues. You can see here it's after a audit. It is error is misspelled. You've got lots of different things here. The dollar sign is in the wrong place. Uh, there's just lots of things that are wrong with this email that uh, anyone that takes just half a second to look at it would realize this is fake and they shouldn't click on it. Uh, just as a side note, typically the IRS does not send emails. Uh, they, uh, they typically don't call you either. They send real snail mail letters. So uh, everything about this is a red flag. And if you also notice down at the bottom here, it says to expedite the refund, there's an online claim form and you can see right here that it's going to refund.net, which again has absolutely nothing to do with the IRS. And here's the trick that I wanted to make sure everybody is aware of. Uh, if you hold your mouse over links like this or any button that someone wants you to click on, you can see down here in the bottom left corner that it shows you the actual address that this link is going to take you to. This is not a foolproof method, but it works most of the time. Don't click on it, just hold your mouse over it. And you can see in this particular case, it's going to a .ru address, which may very well be Russian. So this is, uh, this is about as bad of an email creation as you can get. Whoever was trying to fool you with this didn't do a very good job. So let's move on to another example and see some that might be a little bit more sophisticated. Okay, this next example that we have is actually one that appears to come from Google. And this one they did a little bit better job on because these are emails that you may have actually seen before. They modeled it after an actual example. And what you'll see here is first off, we look up at the top and we instantly see again that this is not coming from Google. This is coming from an address that is definitely not Google. So that is your very first alert uh, right out the gate to let you know that there's a problem here. You can see that they actually did use a genuine Google uh, logo. So it looks legit. It's a notification that your password has changed and it says you've received this message because, and it's got uh, most likely your name in here. Uh, 
So this looks very legit. As a matter of fact, I'm not seeing any uh, dis, uh, any misspellings or grammar issues or anything in here. So this one is a lot more likely to get you to click on it. If you hold your mouse over it, you can see again down here in the bottom left corner that uh, where this link is wanting to take you to. And what I wanted you to notice here is if you look at that link closely, you'll notice there's something odd about it. Google is spelled with zeros instead of O's. And that is a common tactic that the, uh, that the criminals will use because they're hoping you're just in a hurry like most of us are and you're just glancing at it say, oh, it's legit, click, and you've either infected your machine or you've done some released malware, done something else. Uh, so be very, very careful. Don't get in a hurry when you run into an email that looks suspicious. And we get the exact same thing if you notice here where it gives you the handy help center link. It also takes you to that same fake Google account. So that's, uh, that's what we have for example number two. Okay, our next example is with Office 365. We have a lot of clients out there with Office 365, and we get folks sending us this email. They forward it to us quite frequently asking, is this legit? Is my account being, uh, being locked out? Is it being terminated? Is there really suspicious activity? That sort of thing. So that's why I really wanted to show you this example. And you can see here, that once again, uh, this is not always your telltale sign, but once again, you can see here the mess, the address that it's coming from is definitely not Office 365. It's not Microsoft. Uh, so again, that is your number one red red flag at the very beginning. They did use the official Office 365 logo, and they're trying to get your attention by saying your account has been locked and it shows suspicious activity. It even goes on to tell you that they've noticed multiple failed password attempts, and they list your information in here. So this is actually a well-crafted phishing attempt, and it gets a lot of people. So what they do is they click the uh, reset password here, as it's instructing you to do, but what they don't realize is when they click on this link that they're actually giving away their password because it will typically take you out to a website that asks you to confirm your existing password and then enter in a new password. And of course, the website is all fake. You can see it down here in the bottom left corner because I'm holding my mouse over the link. And you can see that uh, Microsoft is spelled with a zero instead of an O. Uh, again, a similar tactic. But those are the things that users are falling for because this looks so legitimate. And, there, and, and when you go out to that website and it's asking you to put in your password, uh, you think you're doing the right thing, but you're really not. You're you're giving the the hacker the credentials to get into your account. So that's that's how this particular malicious email works. Our next example is an Amazon email. And you can see that these, uh, these criminals, which is basically what it is that are creating these phishing emails, they're hitting the most popular items or the most popular topics. You get the Microsofts, you get the Googles, you get the Amazons, you get the things that are the most uh, tempting to click on for end users. And this is a good example. This Amazon email here, we don't have the luxury of it showing where it came from just blatantly like the previous ones did. You've got the Amazon logo, everything is correct. Uh, it's a message from customer service. It's just wanting to confirm your last order because it says there's a mismatch in information. So they want you to go log into your account and correct the, correct the info. However, if you hold your mouse over the link, 
you can see here that obviously this is not Amazon. Uh, there's no telling where this particular one is taking you out to. But I'll about guarantee you if we clicked on it, it would give us a fake Amazon login. And once again, they're trying to steal your login and your password. And they're, aside from that one thing with this uh, fake link or this bad link, there's nothing in this email here that looks suspicious. Uh, this is very well crafted. Again, there's no spell, uh, spelling problems, no grammar problems. Um, the official logos are there. They've done a really clever job at hiding this one, and I'll bet they have a pretty good success at getting folks to click on it and, uh, and give away their Amazon credentials. This next one is interesting because it's kind of generic. They, whoever wrote this particular phishing email, they know what your domain name is. In our case, it's comtechnc.com. And this is one I actually received just the other day. Um, but it comes in and it says that my email account will be deactivated today and that I need to click on this link to upgrade to the latest version. However, you can see on here, there's no logos, there's nothing here to, to tell it was 365, that it was Google, that it was Yahoo, that it was anything. They're just wanting to entice you to upgrade to the latest version. Uh, the interesting thing is down at the bottom of the screen, you can see that they've pointed out uh, thank you, ComtechNC.com security. Uh, I guess this could be effective if you were something like Boeing or GE or Pepsi. Maybe, uh, maybe if this went out to the end users and they thought this might be coming from a corporate structure, uh, perhaps that's why they, they, they wrote it this way and didn't put any particular logos into it. But if we do, cl if we do hold our mouse over that one, Again, you can see it goes to a garbage uh, address that the phishing creator has made up. And I'm sure they're trying to steal credentials again or get some information from you that can be used against you. So this is very new and something to definitely be on the lookout for. Please share this with your users. Again, they may be getting these emails, they may not be telling you, they may be clicking on them and not telling anyone, and you just don't know what kind of damage these things can cause. The final example I'd like to show you is what I think is one of the most devious of all. I wanted to save it till the end because, it, frankly, it's impressive. The, as we take a look at it, we can see that this is Accounts Payable sent us an ACH payment confirmation via PandaDoc. Now that's where it got my attention because PandaDoc is actually a legitimate company. They're similar to Adobe in that they actually do package up documents and send it out for digital signing. So that, that was very, very interesting that they chose to do it this way. And as a matter of fact, you can see right here with this link that they didn't even try to hide the links. The link is correct. It's going to PandaDoc. There's no misspellings. Everything looks legit. So it is very tempting to click on this and find out what is going on because there's no red flags here. The only red flag per se for me is that I wasn't expecting any ACH transfers or confirmation. So to me, that should be a red flag. Same thing is true if you get a shipping receipt, if you get uh, you know anything that's unusual that is not prompted. If you haven't shipped anything in 30 days and you're personally getting a shipping confirmation, not for the company, but for yourself, you know that should be a red flag, that sort of thing. But getting back to this particular email, I uh, went ahead and clicked on this where it says open the document because I wanted to see what it did. I opened mine in a safe environment because this did look a little fishy to me, even though it's extremely well done. And what it actually does is it takes you to pandadoc.com just like the link shows that it would. However, 
When you open the document at Pandadoc, it has a script in it that asks you to confirm your Office 365 credentials to access the PDF file, the document that's there. And that is just really, really devious how they did that by using a legitimate company to actually do their phishing. And that's what I wanted you to be aware of in this is that even, even a legitimate company can be used in this manner. So again, share this kind of thing with your employees, show them these examples so they know what to expect. Thank you again for joining me to go over these examples. It's a shame that we even have to do this, but it is the day and age that we live in. The threats are, are coming uh, amazingly fast. There's new and innovative ones coming out every day. I tried to show you a, a wide example of the different ones that are out there that we've seen, but don't make any mistake about it. These things are coming out daily. So, these are just brief examples. The ones that are coming out, I have no doubt, are going to be even more ingenious, more deceptive. So please be sure and share this with all of your staff, family, friends, everyone. Folks need to know that these threats are out there because they're hitting your inbox frequently. The majority of breaches do happen typically through email. So if we can get folks to be aware of these issues, then we can help mitigate them. We're also going to be continually putting out videos like this. We do security events. We do cybersecurity seminars, all sorts of different things to try to help keep the education going. So please watch your email for those. And again, thank you for joining us.